Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel from a beautiful evening here in Lincolnshire. It's John here and I'm with the all new Peugeot E3008. It is generation three of the 3008 and this one fully electric. I've been given it to have a play with by the team at Taylor's Peugeot here in Boston and there's going to be a full review and walk around coming to the channel soon. However, one thing that I really wanted to do was check out the range in a real world test. It's not going to be a scientific test. However, that is what this video is going to be. I'm going to invite Mrs. John Coupland along with me for the ride, get her view on the car and actually we're going to go to Skegness for the the evening. Posh, I know. The way that I've worked it out is I'm going to check the mileage that the Peugeot is going to tell me that I'm going to get. So when we get in it, it might say that I'm going to get 300 miles. I'm going to drive a set distance to Skegness and back, clock the distance, so work out how much that distance is, and then take that away and compare it to the range that the Peugeot is telling me. It's not overly scientific, but it should give us a rough estimate of estimated miles versus actual miles and the range. There's going to be a few caveats which we'll discuss when we're in the car, but come along with us then. We're going to head to Skegness and we're going to test, again in a non-scientific way, the range of the new Peugeot E3008. Right, okay, hello. Hello. Good evening, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? I am okay. I'm roasting is what I am. What do you reckon, initial thoughts to the Peugeot? I love it. You like it? I love it. Yeah, it's um, it's certainly a big old beast though, don't you think? Oh, it's huge. It's, it, it's massive, it's a massive car. <laughs> uh, it's almost as big as my van. Yeah. Much. I think we're probably going to have to put it next to the van at some point. Mm -hmm. um, your job is this then, to keep an eye on the mileage. Can you just get your phone out and write this down for me? So the caveat that I spoke about um, before the start of this video is I am going to use the aircon and I am going to use the sat nav and the whistles and bells. So we're not going to be driving it frugally. It's telling me that we've got 93% battery and a range of 321 miles. We're going to go to Skegness and I'm going to use the onboard computer. Uh, where to? Well, let's go to Skegness. Oh, sunny Skeg. Yeah, <laughs> I know how to treat you tonight. Oh, you do, I'm We're spoiled. going to go to Skegness, what's it called? Aquarium. Oh, definitely spoiled. <laughs> which it's telling me here uh, Skegness Aquarium is 21 miles away. So actually that's really easy to work out because the range is 321 miles and it's telling us that we're driving 21 miles. So by the time we get there, our range should be 300 miles if it's accurate. Are oh, you taking a picture of that, are you? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent. You've got to pick it. Good stuff. Uh, and then we'll do the same back. So the first part of this is getting there. Again, the aircon is going to be on. We're going to have the navigation system on. Ready to rumble? Always. Let's go. I'm going to follow the route of this, by the way, as well. So we might never make it. <laughs> we'll, we'll be okay. Um, I am going to use the car in normal driving mode, so I'm not going to have it on eco mode or sport mode. Um, and again, I'm going to follow the sat-nav. It is saying that by the time we get to Skegness, we'll have gone from 93% to 87% on our charge. What do you think to the inside? Oh, look, it is so comfy. It's clean, it's nice, it's posh. I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. It's a really nice car. Now, obviously, you're used to... Uh, how Bangers. do I put this? bangers owing to the fact that that is what we do oh there's a classic car show on at our local um, bowling alley i yeah, say classic do, car show there's, there today. there's three cars we don't fit in today no i am used to driving the protons the armstrong siddleys the audis the micras it's quiet in here isn't it it is it's being, really quiet being an ev now this is the first time i think you've been inside an electric vehicle yes um 
it's not the first time I've driven an electric vehicle. I have also driven the Peugeot E208 uh, as part of my job role. And actually, I do know that the range that we get from those is not as advertised. So uh, I've driven 20 miles in my Peugeot uh, E208 and actually it's clocked up that it's used 70 miles so this will be a very interesting thing. There's got to be different sorts of driving as well so we are going to be on roads that we can go up to 60 miles an hour we're also going to be on roads that are country driving. Would you consider having an electric vehicle? Yeah I would. I only drive around town don't I? And that I think is where EVs are probably suitable so I do a big commute. My commute every day is a hundred miles and I do that in the smart car for a reason. But actually if this is to be believed I could probably do three times my commute on a full charge. You as somebody who as I say poodles into town and back mm -hmm. would probably get away with having an EV and charging it once a week. Yeah it's very rare I do a long drive. That's what I've got you for. <laughs> yeah, that's my job, isn't it? Yeah. There is, as I say, going to be a full review and test drive of the car on the channel, but talk us through some of the things that you can see that you like. I like the steering wheel. It's quite it's a small. small. Yeah, it is small. It's a strange shape, but I quite like it. It's dinky and cute. So, the steering wheel, I think, will be a bit of a bone of contention for quite a few people. Oh, it's telling me there's a speed camera. Slow down. Um, I think the steering wheel will be a bone of contention for some people because, as you say, it's dinky. Dinky is a good yeah. way to describe it. Um, you like that, do you? Yeah, but I'm quite a small person, so... Yeah. I've had to move the steering wheel height so I can see the eye cockpit properly because I couldn't see it all properly. Um, if I had it at my usual driving height. I'm getting used to the steering wheel though. It feels a bit like a a toy. You know which one I mean? You know, yeah, on your PlayStation. Look, yeah, it looks like one of the, I don't know, um, remember the Wii Mario steering wheels? Yeah, yeah. It's like one of them, but a diff you know, a little bit bigger. The whole of the centre of the uh, steering wheel is covered by my hand and my palm. So it is quite small, and as you say, it is an unusual shape as well. It's like, I don't know, racing shape, would you suggest? Yeah. There's all like sorts of whistles and bells on there. What we got? We've got Bluetooth answering your phone. We can turn the radio up and down, cruise control and speed limiter. So you're a fan of the steering wheel? Yes. Anything else that you are a fan of that I like inside? the screen thing. Okay, so let's talk about that. So how would you describe that? Snazzy. 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 Oh, it just looks different and it's clear and it tells you everything you need to know. It's got the and it eye just, cockpit. It looks good. So it's got a big elongated screen across the top here which is different to the Mark II which just had sort of a heads up display and then maybe a centre display on the later models. This, I don't know how long would you say that is, two foot? Yeah. Two it's, foot, two and a half. It, it's about a two foot display. Half of it is touchscreen and is your navigation system, and half of it is your heads up display. It shows us your miles per hour, your um, power that you're using, your mileage, and your battery power. It's all right, isn't it? It's, it's not distracting, but I could see that it could be distracting if you didn't train yourself not to look at it all the time. Yeah. What else have you seen that you liked? I like the colours that are all the way around the car. Little neon lights. But shame on you, Peugeot, there is no pink satin. No, that's you've got true. You've got blue, you've got green, you've got yellow. You haven't got pink. And there's not even a purple or even a red. No, that's a good point. So uh, I don't know how to describe it. Again, you've got ambient light, haven't you, that go um, along the door cards and along the front of the dash. And we can't see it very well in the daylight, but. I'm guessing at night it looks quite snazzy, if we're using that <laughs> word. Um, and you can change that, you can customise that on the centre console. And yeah, you're right, we've got, what, a yellow, yep. uh, a dull green, yep. and then multiple shades of blue. 
and that's it. Well, I wanted to put it into pink mode for you because, as everyone knows, you've got the bright pink Fiat 500, and I wanted to put it into purple mode for me because that is my favourite colour. But it seems to be on-brand colours for Peugeot, but nothing really exciting. Yeah. Don't get me wrong; it's a nice feature, but it would be nice to have more colours, wouldn't it? Oh, definitely. And now we can see them colours. They shine quite bright. It will yeah. be interesting to see those at night. Mm. Have you got enough leg room there? I've too much leg room. Yeah. <laughs> you could get like another one of me down here. Be per perfect for Crystal. <laughs> you could get Crystal the Inspector, Footwell Inspector in there. Um, one thing I've noticed is if I was to have my seat at the driving position and you have your seat at the position you've got it in, there's about that much gap for somebody's legs. So somebody could comfortably mm. sit behind you, but I am sitting comfortably in my driving position here and nobody, unless it was a, a child, I think, yeah. is probably getting in the back there. Yeah, there isn't a lot of room at all. To be fair, even if I was to sit behind you, it would be a bit tight. You reckon you'd be uncomfortable in there? Yeah, it'd be very tight. Now, you're a lot smaller than me. What do you think to the ride height getting in and out of the car and where we're sitting. <laughs> it's a bit of a drop when you get out for the first time and you're not really concentrating. Is you just it? treat it like a normal car. Okay. It's definitely a drop. <laughs> and that took you by surprise, did it? It did. Do you think you'd need a step or not? Oh no, I don't need a step. But it was just a bit uns you know, unsuspecting. You didn't expect it for the first no. time. Do you reckon children would, would struggle to get in and out? Small children. Yeah. So maybe lifting the kids in and out is going to be um, something you're going to have to do for a, a, a while there. I obviously have absolutely no problems getting in and out of the car. Um, but yeah, the ride height is nice. I don't feel like I'm up in the air though. No. Once I'm in, I'm no. sat quite comfortably. It does feel like a big car though. It's very hard to see out the back window. You're right, it is hard to see out the back window and that is probably why it's an absolute godsend that this has got 360 degree cameras and reversing camera. I would struggle actually um, to see out the back very well because that rear window is quite small isn't it? Yeah and it's a very strange, again it's a strange shape. The back go back seats kind of go up where the window goes down. One thing I did notice earlier when I was having a play is I sat in the back and I put the headrest to the height that I would want it and actually I couldn't put it up any higher because it touches the C-pillar. Can you see the headrest in the back? Yeah. It touches the roof. So that is something I don't like, that slopey back. Mm. Because in the previous generation it was like less of a slope at the back there. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else we're going to discuss? We've got uh, another the 15 miles. <laughs> the seats are very comfortable. Do you reckon? Yes. So these are uprated seats. This model is the GT model that we're in and it's got these sort of half Alcantara leather effect seats and it's got the embossing on the headrest which I think is quite cool. Um, you reckon it's comfy? Oh, it's very comfortable. It's got a heated seat. Shall we flip them on? No. <laughs> it is. It's about I don't know, 25 degrees outside. Oh, 25 degrees is what it says, what well, I guess. Um, yeah, we won't be flipping the uh, the heated seats on then. No heated steering wheel though. Oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comfortable in the seats. They hug me nicely, they don't feel too firm here and I'm uh, a lot wider, shall we say, than you. As a smaller person, do you feel like you're getting thrown about a bit in the seat or? You no. feel you feel protected. No, I feel comfortable. It's nice. The aircon's doing a good job. Yes. In fact, I'm going to turn the aircon down a bit. Watch wow. this. Okay, Peugeot. Turn fan speed down. How cool is that? Automatic voice controls to control things like navigation, the um, temperature, you can use it for your Bluetooth and your media system. Mm. Keeping you awake? A little bit. <laughs> so we have done 
Uh, I don't know how many miles, actually, it doesn't tell me. But we are now showing a range of 315 miles with 14 miles left to go. Which actually means that we're using less miles than predicted. That could be due to the regenerative braking or the fact that actually I'm not on a main road thrashing it yet. But by the time we get to the aquarium, it should be 300 miles. And at the moment it's saying we're going to be using 300 or having 301 left. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Did you? Oh, what's that for sale? Oh, Ford, no. Ford Focus. No. <laughs> There's lots of different buttons and bits and pieces. In fact, you've got your phone under here on the wireless charging oh, pad. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, quite, that's quite cool. It just picked your phone up. You didn't need to install anything or any yeah. apps or anything. So you just put your phone in its case on this pad. And it's picked it up, hasn't it? Yeah. Cool. Now is a good time for me to use the cruise control through the village of Wrangell. I have set it at 30 miles an hour, which is the speed limit through the village. And it's keeping me nicely in the line there. And actually using that cruise control is saving some power there. It's saying I'm being more economic with it. Very interesting. 91% on the battery. 2% lost. We haven't had a chance to thrash it yet, have we? No, but there's a few roads coming up. There's a road coming up here, which is where you nearly killed me. It wasn't my fault. Hang on a minute. Right here is where you wrote your Peugeot off. Yeah, <laughs> RIP my Peugeot. You had a, what is it, Peugeot 307? 207 Sport. There we go, 207 Sport in like an oxygen blue colour. Yeah, it was it was a great car. It was a good little car, that 2007 plate, mm. and somebody in a van decided to smash straight into the side of us. Yeah. And write it off. On our way to Skeg as well. We was on the way to Skeg. <laughs> Hang on a minute. In a Peugeot on the way to Skeg. We, last time we were in a Peugeot on the way to Skeg. <laughs> it didn't end well. It did not end well. Oh dear. Are you getting some chippies from Skegness? Are you going to buy me chippies? No. Oh, well then. Sorry. Check this out. Oh, what's that telling me? Speed camera, I think. Yeah, it's telling me there's a 40 mile an hour speed camera. Good job I'm doing 36. What do you reckon of that? Oh, it's cold. In there? Yeah. It's really? Cold. It's like a chill box. Oh my goodness. Thing. Oh yeah, it's got a vent in here that cools this internal yeah, that'd vent. That'd be a good place to keep your drinks in summer. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Good spot. I didn't realise that. So the air conditioning filters into this little cubby hole and you can oh. turn it on and off. Let's turn it on. Smart. Oh yeah, that is good, isn't it? I thought it was just like a normal little box. Yeah, really. no, that's good. Well, so, was, I bought my hand in because it's like quite deep. <laughs> you could get snacks in there. You could get all sorts of it. It's really big. It is really big in there. It also Close acts it as your armrest and yeah. it is quite a nice padded armrest. Mm. I say, there. There's a lot of fabric all the way around this car. Or, well, yeah, it's fabric, but it's quite thin fabric, but it does look nice. It just tarts it up a little bit. Do you like that? Yeah, I The do. grey fabric. It looks like, I don't know, a wedding suit. Do you not think? Yeah, no, you've said it, but it looks nice. <laughs> I think that would catch really easily. It is just plastic that's covered with this this fine fabric, isn't it? But it does look like some sh some trousers I had when I was a retail manager. <laughs> I think we're going to take it the long way home so we can drive on the motorway. Because at the moment, in the great flatlands of Lincolnshire, we are getting what we're being told we're getting. But I think if we start accelerating hard, going up and down hills, if we go into the Lincolnshire Walls, that will probably change the, uh, the mileage a wee bit. But so far, it's telling me we're 11 miles away and we've got 311 miles left. So, so far, the predicted mileage, we're getting it. So is it an automatic then? Because there's no gear stick anywhere. Fully automatic, 
uh, is controlled by this little wheel here. So you select park, reverse, neutral and drive, which is standard now on um, modern automatic Peugeots. You would see this on any automatic Peugeot that wasn't an EV as well. Sometimes they're down here, sometimes they're down here. I don't actually like where it is in the dash here. I would prefer it somewhere here. I don't know what you think. I suppose to say you can't catch it with your elbow. Yeah, probably, but I also think that if I was to start fiddling with this whilst I'm driving... Oh, it is. It will let me do it. Oh, don't. Oh, it will. It will let me put it into neutral whilst driving. God. <laughs> it won't let me put it into reverse, though. Yeah, mate, so it's to stop you from catching it with your elbow. You were right. Ah, now we're starting to see a change. So 307 miles now, I'm at 8.4 miles away. Now I'm doing higher speeds, 50 miles an hour, 55, 60 miles an hour, and are accelerating to try and keep up with this Asda van. Now we're seeing a little bit of a difference in the range. But not too much, are we? Now I'm on a piece of road which is 60 miles an hour, and I've lost the Asda van in front of me, so I can now accelerate and enjoy the, uh, the drive and immediately I've seen a change in that range 302 miles now um, and we've got seven miles left to go 89% battery and it's telling us we should have 86% battery when we get there so now I've decided to take it up a bit to 60 miles an hour we are seeing a change there but now I can coast and it should charge back up. 55, 54, coasting, coasting, as we come into this 50 mile an hour zone. Not very scientific this, is it? Drive somewhere and see how much we use. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ready for my tea, what's for tea? I don't know. What have you done? I've been at work all day. Oh, You've done, been at home all day. I've done playing with a Peugeot all day. Oh dear. The OK Peugeot speaker system, oh, I've said it now. Sorry, close, cancel. Sorry, you can't do this my voice yet. Oh, OK. The OK Peugeot uh, system, by the way, has got two speakers, one here and one here, and it knows who is telling it to do what. So, if you were to tell it to turn your side of the car up in uh, temperature, it would do it on your side only. Oh, that's very cool. Give it a go. Okay, Peugeot. Turn fan down. So it's decreased the fan your side of the car, but kept mine at number two, so your fan speed is number one. Number one, and mine is number two. Let's try this. Okay, Peugeot. Increase temperature to 25 degrees. So it's kept your side of the car on low, the lowest temperature possible, and has increased mine to 25 degrees. Now, I think that is a nice little feature. Yeah, I like that. But it knows. I'm always moaning about how cold you make it. Yeah, but it also knows that it's me asking you to do it because it's coming from the microphone on this side of the car. Yeah. Hmm. It's a bit gadgety, but I like that. Right, now we've done a little bit of driving at 60 miles an hour and our range has dramatically decreased now. Uh, Heavy braking as well there. Heavy braking because this RSQ3 doesn't know how to drive. Um, so now we have rapidly reduced our mileage in comparison, but not too much. 296 miles projected range and we've got four miles left to get to the aquarium. So at the moment, it's four miles out. It's not bad, is it? Now entering Skegness. Woo! Woohoo! Did you bring your two pen pennies? No. Oh. I have to put a fiver in the machine and get loads out. What's this, the building? I don't know. Live, work, thrive. Ah, oh, it's the ah. new Proton Museum. Mm. <laughs> Looks like 
looks like it's part of the college. But that would be a good proton museum, would it not? No. The John Coupland Museum of Motoring. Oh, look, there's an inspector. Oh, there is a little inspector. That's the Skegness inspector. <laughs> Seaside inspector. Aww. Talking of the inspector, do you reckon she'll have enough room in the boot? Oh, 100%. Boot's massive. Do you Love it. we could get multiple inspectors in the boot? Yes, I do. I reckon we could get you, me and the inspector in the boot. <laughs> it's a big old boot, and actually I've laid down in it earlier. It's oh, a big old boot. Wow, okay. Okay, so back to the real world test. We are 0.8 miles away from Skegness Aquarium. And it's showing us on the range here that we've got 292 miles left. Meaning that we have used eight more miles than it originally predicted, or should have been. I don't think that's too bad. No. Considering in the E208 I've tested, I did a 20 mile journey and it used 70 miles. So far, I'm impressed. Again, we've sort of pootled along on the A52. When I take it up and into the walls, that will be more of a telltale sign. We're arriving then at the Skegness Aquarium. Oh, and fish and chips smell so good. <laughs> well, we're at Skegness Aquarium. We have reached our destination and our range is now 291 miles. So it was nine miles out. That's not bad going. That isn't bad going, is it? I'm going to use the reversing sensors now to do a parallel park. And I'm not very good at parallel parking. So this will be interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, sweetheart. Those 360 cameras make it very easy. To reverse park it. What do you reckon of that? Made it look really easy. It did, didn't it? Do you know what? I couldn't have done that in my van without them. And as you say, it's the same sort of size, isn't it? Yeah. Chippies? Chippies. Oh, I feel good after them chippies. <laughs> right, it's time to go home then. And I'm going to go the long way, like we said via the hills and the main roads. Um, I've done the sat nav, it took me ages to work out how to do multi-stop, so I'm gonna go via Spillsby and then home. Uh, so we've currently got 200, are you writing this down? Write it down. <laughs> uh, so we've currently got, yes, 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 yes. Uh, sorry, this is driving me bonkers. 291 miles on the range and 29 miles is our journey. 291 minus 29. Oh, that's 262. Oh, see, you didn't need a calculator for that. Um, so by the end of this, getting home, <laughs> we should have 262 miles on the range and according to this, 77% battery. Let's go. I'm impressed with the turning circle there. Getting out of that parking space, I spun straight around. How good was that? So going in the hills, being able to open it up a bit more, I genuinely think we're gonna lose more range than um, we did on the way here, because on the way here, we drove it quite sensibly, we drove it quite nicely behind that Asda truck, and uh, yeah. Oh, the teddy bus, so cute. Teddy bus? It's a teddy bus. Uh-oh, what's on the teddy bus? Teddy bears. Apart from teddy bears. <laughs> The teddy bus behind us has got a big smiley face on it. Oh, it's Actually, following. That is nightmare fuel. It's cool. Teddy bus. Oh, please follow us. It is following yes, us. Yes, teddy uh, bear. Oh, they've got blooming... Teddies all down the side. Teddies all down the side and they've got tutus on and all sorts. Dad would like that. 
Right, so we're heading out now onto the main road uh, where it is a 60 mile an hour speed limit. 287 miles is our range. It's just dropped to 286. We've got 27 miles to go home. We are still driving sensibly. And I don't want people to think that I drive like a Wally, but there's no fast accelerating, is there? We've not done a lot of motorway driving yet or any sort of fast acceleration. No. So 77% is the uh, battery estimate when we get home. Currently on 85%, and we've still got 26 miles to go. Mm. I think this is going to be more insightful, but we are driving sensibly 55 miles an hour. There's not much uh, regenerative Regenerative charging going on, but yeah, I know. Nim 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 nim. Hey right, Taylor. Right here we go. Let's accelerate. 40, 48, 50, 56, 58, 60. That's got some fast acceleration, hasn't it? Oh, now I'm stuck behind a Nissan Quishquash. Bit of a quick overtake. It has got some power behind it when you put the pedal to the metal, hasn't it? It's got mm. immediate pa power. Oh, look at these bends. Shame this quish quash is slowing me down. It grips to the road nicely, and the steering and the handling is A1, boss. Oh, that's clever. So it's got a different firmness of charge. Did you feel that? You're slowing down, of course. It's the car slowing me down. Why? It's a 60. No, no, it's, it's charging the car. Now I'm using power to accelerate. Power! Slow down, charging. Power! Slow down, charging. <laughs> just being silly You're now. You're <laughs> I'm just being silly now. Right, I'm doing the speed limit, 60 miles an hour. Uh, we've lost 2% battery on the guesstimate, and actually we're at 82%, 266 miles. What did you work it out to be when we got back? 261. Yeah, 261, 262. It was, oh dear. It was somewhere around there. Was, well, we've got another 20 miles to go yet, and we've hit our target. Oh dear. Get out the way, Cash Guy. It's going all the way to Boston. <sighs> so, a bit of regenerative braking has meant that actually the battery and the percentage estimate has gone up from 75% to 76. 261 miles on our range currently and we've got 15 miles to go to get home. Can you just look on your phone and tell me what I said it was going to be when we get home? Uh, 262. So when we got home it was going to be 262 miles on the range? Yeah. Well the range is 261 miles and we're 15 miles away from home. So the uh, accelerating the higher speeds and the hills have made a big difference there to the range. So it's 20 miles out. Ah, goodbye Cash Guy. The rapid acceleration to 60 miles an hour there has used a lot of juice. 254 miles it used sort of 10 miles of the juice just to rapidly accelerate past that cash guy. I think the moral of the story here is you need to drive it like a nun. This is a nice car, isn't it? Mm. I could see me and you having one of these. Yes, me too. The problem is... We don't have 51 grand to spend on a car. That is one of the problems, <laughs> you're right. But the main problem is, sometimes we do big journeys 
and I don't want to be tied in to having to stop and charge up. Mm. Now, there's going to be people out there that tell me, John, charging, fast charging takes 45 minutes to an hour. I understand that. But in that 45 minutes to an hour, I could probably bankrupt us with going to Costa or Grex or somewhere like that. Oh, yeah, eating all absolutely. Because I don't take that lunch. I eat out. We would spend a lot more time in service stations than we do currently. Hmm. Saying that, being objective, you factor that into your journey time, don't you? So if we were to go, let's say, to Scotland right now, it would take us, I don't know how many hours, four hours. You would factor in a couple of charges, wouldn't you? And say it's going to take six hours to get there instead of four. And that would actually break your journey up. That's brilliant if you've got the time to do that. But if you wanted to just get in the car and drive... I think that's a bit of a nuisance. Especially when we're not getting the range advertised, which we've proved. Mm. So if my range said 362 miles and we decided to go somewhere that was 300 miles, I don't think we'd get there on one charge. Do you? Depends on the way you drive, isn't it? It does. It also depends on the weather, the road conditions, what we're using, if we've got the aircon on, if we've got the radio on, cruise control, adaptive braking, regenerative braking, and yeah, how fast you drive. On a motorway, I think at 70 miles an hour, you are going to rapidly decrease your range. Because now, we're still seven miles from home, and when we were in Skegness, it said we were going to be home with 262 miles on the range, and actually, we've got 246 showing with another six miles to go, so it's actually 22 miles out. That's not bad, I don't think. Do I think you could ever achieve 362 miles out of a charge? No, not a chance. But if you tailor your expectations and say, oh, I think I'm going to get 280, that'd do for me. 280 miles range would still get me to work and back twice. Maybe three times. So, all in all, what do you reckon to the Peugeot E3008? I like it. It's a nice car. It is a nice car. And for £51,000, you'd want it to be a nice car, right? 100%. I don't think it's something that would work for us as a couple, but aside from the fact that we... Um, couldn't afford it but if you could I suppose we've proved that real world range is different to advertised range but it all depends on your driving style your driving conditions and your road it's not that far off we were expecting to get home with 262 miles range on the clock and we're going to get home with about 236. Um, interestingly, we were still expecting 76% battery and the battery is currently at 76%. So maybe the battery expectancy is better than the range expectancy from a mileage point of view. I'm still impressed because Last time I did something like this, I did a 20 mile journey and lost 70 miles. Did you enjoy your trip to Skeg? It was different. It was <laughs> different, as you say, for us. We are home. 
we can give you the final figures in just a moment's time. Well, there it is then, a real world kind of non-scientific test drive for the Peugeot E3008. We achieved 3.1 miles per kilowatt on average on the way home there, and I thought that was quite good. To achieve the 326 miles, however, that Peugeot advertise, you would need to be averaging about five miles per kilowatt, and I don't think that is entirely possible. However, the range on the way home, we lost about 20 miles in comparison to the miles that we did, and I don't think that is too bad. Maybe you do. Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please, if you haven't already done so. There will be a full review, a full tour, a full look around the car, and a road test coming to the channel soon. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It helps us do what we do, and it helps us tell YouTube that you enjoy uh, watching what we do as well. Let me know in the comments down below, have I missed something totally obvious or did you think that was a relatively fair road test? If I could do it again, I would like to go further. I would like to go on motorways and I would like to put it through its paces a bit more. Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this latest car review. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I've selected a couple more videos from that sort of thing. Uh, here, you might like those. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so to stay up to date with the channel.